Hi everyone, welcome to my Veducation series. I hope all is well. The topic of this discussion is the history of veganism, or rather the history of modern veganism since the 1800s. But first, welcome to Earthwalk Harmony, where I share delicious vegan recipes and tips on how to live a more harmonious, resonant lifestyle, because living in harmony allows you to do what you enjoy more and enjoy what you do more. Okay, let's get into it. So veganism has an interesting backstory in that while it has its roots in vegetarianism, vegetarianism actually once was what veganism is today, or at least mostly. Throughout history, there have always been cultures and individuals that practiced veganism and vegetarianism for spiritual and ethical reasons. Leonardo da Vinci is one such individual, which is why I felt his Vitruvian man drawing was appropriate art for this series. Modern veganism documentation starts in the early 1800s. The history of the past two centuries is dotted with various doctors, philosophers, poets, educators, reformers, and activists writing about their thoughts and personal trials of veganism, though the word had not yet been invented. You'll likely find some of the following names to be familiar. Names like Percy Shelley, husband of Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein. Sylvester Graham, namesake of the Graham Cracker. Bronson Alcott, father of Louisa May Alcott, author of Little Women. Henry David Thoreau, poet, essayist, and philosopher. John Harvey Kellogg of the Kellogg Company. And Mahatma Gandhi, lawyer, activist, and icon of peaceful protest or nonviolent resistance. These are just a few of the people responsible for the shaping of modern veganism. The early terms used to describe the dietary lifestyle were plant foods and the vegetable diet. These terms hailed from doctors and reformers who authored books on the topic and coined the phrases to best describe the dietary lifestyle they promoted. And they usually referred to the omission of all animal foods and even stimulants like coffee and tea in some instances. They often also indicated the exclusion of animal-derived goods from use in day-to-day -day life, showing that there was an ethical rationale involved. The early organizations consisted of boarding schools, communes, and hydrotherapy institutions that promoted a dietary health regimen of plant foods and purified water. The most well-known of these was Alcott House Academy in England, modeled after Bronson Alcott's Temple School in America. The first documented use of the term vegetarian appeared in the Alcott House Journal in 1842. In 1850, the Vegetarian Society was formed by the merging of Alcott House with the Bible Christian Church of England. The merging was divisive at the start, being that the church viewed vegetarianism as including dairy, eggs, and honey, and the academy did not. After nearly a century of trying to define the movement with the parameters of abstinence from all animal products, as it had mostly been up until the society's formation, the total plant food group split off and formed the Vegan Society in England, as it is still known today. The term vegan was coined in 1944 by members of the Vegan Society and was cleverly created from the first three and last two letters of the word vegetarian. There are now vegan societies and vegan organizations worldwide and many are members of the wider and older International Vegetarian Union or IVU, but interestingly, Practices reveal the persistence of debate over the meaning of the terms vegan and vegetarian. Former IVU manager and historian John Davis states that these organizations accept vegetarian members, though they often only promote ideals that adhere to veganism or, as he says, the plant food only version of vegetarian. While this may smell of v-leetism or vegan elitism, as I like to say, he actually makes the very true and endearing comment that vegans are part of the vegetarian movement and always have been, and vegetarian always has been with or without eggs and dairy. So I think this is a message of positivity and a let's work together attitude. 
And I'd like to extend this spirit to all those who are experimenting with and embracing ideas like Meatless Mondays and Vegan Fridays. And furthermore, I'd like to take a moment to express my gratitude to those in my own inner circle who have sat at my table or cooked with me and have opened up to enjoying a delicious vegan meal. Thank you all graciously. Now, getting back to John Davis of the International Vegetarian Union. If you're interested in watching and reading more of his content on veganism and vegetarianism, I'll include some links in the description box below. And I'll also include a link to an article on the history of veganism published by the Vegan Society of America. And I hope you enjoyed this little talk and found it to be informative. Next time, I'll be getting into the reasons why people choose to be or go vegan. And I also promise to have a delicious vegan recipe coming up very soon. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informational. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.